Hello, everybody, and good morning. I hope everybody is well. I am Barbara Ann, your host, and this is my channel, Straight Out of Context. Our almost four year old pug, Bosco, uh, he sees himself. <laughs> he sees himself on the screen. He would like to say hello. He really doesn't like being um, on the seat next to me here because he, his uh, paws slip on it. So, unless he's on the bed with me or in the recliner, um, yeah, he doesn't like sitting in any kind of seat that doesn't have like a squishy type feel to it, but I just wanted to pick him up so he could say hello. Yes. Who's that handsome boy on the screen? Is that you? <laughs> Is that Bosco? Oh, what's that? You see the squirrel outside, don't you? Or you see a bad kitty cat outside. What's that? Is that a stray kitty cat outside? The one that you want to go make friends with? <laughs> Hello. So what is up, everybody? How have you been? I actually made a video, and it, it was taken down over a week ago, um, in regards to everybody, all the celebrities, people that are potentially going to be sued, people that have said some really nasty things about Catherine, Princess of Wales, aka Kate Middleton and her being disappeared or that she's possibly deceased and they're hiding it and all of this stuff and I actually had made a short video um, telling people that I, I think she has cancer and the reason why um, I say that is because I had stage 2 slash stage 3 cervical cancer myself and in 2018 October, November, December, all the way to January of 2019, I had several um, tests done because I was coming back um, positive for cancer cells. From there, I had um, three surgeries before July of 2019 by an OBGYN who ended up taking out a part of my cervix. I also had an, an ablation, a biopsy, um, several other things done during these three surgeries. But it was confirmed that I had cancer, that it was actually stage two in width and stage three in depth. Um, he did actually remove it in that third surgery, but I was then referred to the Van Elslander Cancer Center in Detroit. And my oncologist, who I still see and I'm always going to see is there at the Van Elslander Cancer Center and I seen her and then of course she said okay no not a total not a partial but a radical hysterectomy and I didn't even know what that meant I had a partial um vaginal removal I don't know if they say that it's a, a vagina sectomy or ectomy I'm not really sure what they would call, call that I think I'm somewhere along the lines but that's a part of the radical hysterectomy that I had I had a hip to hip incision it was an 11 hour operation there was a whole team of pathologists oncologists all kinds of medical in there for that surgery I also had a total pelvic lymphadenectomy done you have a stem here in your pelvic that comes down into um, two different ways here and you have your lymph nodes on there that's your immune system they dissected and removed all of my pelvic lymph nodes and I definitely um, four years in remission almost now um, I definitely can tell because I just got over a lower respiratory infection and anytime I get uh, uh, and I get sick or cold very e like colds very easily um, just because my immune system still it, it never will be the same as it was before but I can definitely tell not having those lymph nodes because I have where I get swelling in the lymph nodes here in the neck anytime I have anything kind of going on and they sometimes they swell just like for no reason at all which is really crazy but anywho I did a video and I said I think there's something more serious going on with um Kate Princess of Wales um, Her Royal Highness. So uh, I don't know why YouTube actually took that down. I thought that was, you know, hey, it's in my opinion. It, it, I went through this. That's why I felt like, okay, she's definitely 
got something more going on. That's why they're not hiding this, but that's why they're taking their time and their privacy, which they are entitled to. And to me, talking about my cancer and in my cancer journey, still to this day, even my disability that I was born with, my physical disability, and having fibromyalgia and all those other things, it's helpful for me to talk about it because, you know, ha having kids and family, they don't necessarily always understand because they say, oh, you look okay. Looking okay and being okay physically are two different things. And when you are in constant pain, chronic pain, all day, every day for years, it's, it's exhausting and it takes a lot out of you mentally and emotionally. And I, I mean, some days I'm just emotionally just dead. I mean, I'm the complete opposite of emotionally retardant or emotionally immature. So, um, I definitely understand and sympathize with Kate Middleton and what she is going through. And, um, y you know, I, I just thought everybody is giving her so much shit and everybody is speculating. You know what? When she made the announcement that she was going to be having a major abdominal surgery, that right there was already too much information. Her basic human rights civil rights, constitutional rights, um, legal rights, religious rights, wherever you live, whatever, your, your basic human rights, you have the right to your body, your privacy, you, you have the right to your medical records. That means you don't have to disclose or tell anybody anything if you don't want to. Right? She already said enough when she said she was having an abdominal surgery. People should have left it at that and left her alone. It's a HIPAA violation to try to take, here in the United States, to take somebody's medical records to release any information without their consent or knowledge. And it's very particular, even when they do consent to the release of any kind of information, who, when, where, why, and how. <laughs> so all of these people that are now backpedaling because they really put their foot in, in it, you, you look dumb. You look dumb and you look ignorant as fuck. I'm just going to say it plain as day. And not only that, but you're fucking rude and you're nosy. You shouldn't be speculating or having opinions or assumptions on somebody's medical. Anything. It's not your fucking business. But I saw a really huge increase of content creators on YouTube, especially, that were making videos and content about this exact thing you guys all look stupid now too because youtube is a what i would consider the mass media of modern age and all those people that were saying things and making us yeah the fact that she was even put in a position where she had to make a choice between releasing private medical information or letting that continue on for another several months is really fucked up and everybody should be ashamed of themselves that she had to be put in that situation where she had to make that choice to tell people private information that she didn't want to tell shame on anybody anybody who is monetizing and getting any kind of financial gain from creating content on that and there's a lot of people that do cover the royal family and are saying things now and and the reason why i think she has one of the five female cancers cervical cancer um ovarian cancer vulval cancer uh what's the other one um uterine cancer there's another one is it in the fallopian tube i don't know i'm gonna have to look this up hold on i know this i know this i don't know why i'm not remembering it though but i know um my my cancer diagnosis, you know, uh, scared the shit out of me. It really did. My can't my kids were all present when I got that. So was my mother, and it has a really good prognosis rate. Actually, cervical, ovarian, uterine, vaginal, and vulval um, cancers. Yeah. So it says a sixth type of gynecologic cancer is the very, very rare fallopian tube cancer because fallopian tubes are very, very small. And um, usually cancer doesn't 
pro start or progress there, but so technically six, but I think it was one of those. And the reason is because I have been through it myself. I've been through it myself. And it has been almost four years and I still have the residual effects of cancer whooping my ass every single fucking day of my life. And I live in chronic pain due to my disability and all of the things that cancer took for me. And it is a really hard process to grieve the fact that I am never going to be what I was physically, mentally, emotionally before cancer. It's grieving that you think your body can just bounce right back. Yeah, we, we, I'm alive. I'm in remission. I had cancer treatment for two years after. I lost a lot. I gave up a lot. But I was only 33 at the time. I'm 38 now. A lot of hope, a lot of faith. And I really do pray and hope that um, Catherine, Princess of Wales, will get through this. The preventative treatment of chemotherapy that she is doing is just that. So when she says that, believe her and stop speculating, assuming, questioning, and just leave it be. And I don't want to be the one to say, I told you so, but just leave it be. Leave it be. This is one thing that people do not need to be making content creation on uh, other than the fact you are sending well wishes and prayers and or talking about cancer. You know, that's that's the only time that it is appropriate to mention that. But in other news that apparently I have missed, um, Candace Owen is, is going to be leaving the Daily Wire. There's something going on there where she has announced her split from the Daily Wire. And um, I think she had made an announcement that she was going to be doing her own YouTube channel soon. Who knows? Maybe she's working on her own website her own network creation production something i don't know but i've seen a lot of uh candace owen tiktoks um youtube shorts i've seen a lot of content recently with her and it's not that i'm i'm not a fan of hers and i don't necessarily dislike her because i don't really dislike or hate anybody um i i, I either like you or just don't regard you you know uh, that's just kind of how i am <laughs> Um, I do like the fact that she stands up and speaks truth, societal truth, uh, political truths, national truths. Um, she definitely speaks a lot of truth for the African-American community, being an African-American. So her, her insight, I think it's really great to see somebody just speak the truth, just simply saying the truth, even if she forms an opinion different than your own you know um that's fine that's what makes people to me beautiful unique interesting is being different you know a lot of people argue and fight over the difference of opinions and the difference of thought processes and the difference in intelligent and wisdom and age and all these other things and I have always, since I was very young, found that to be the most intriguing, the most curious, the most special, the most beautiful is the difference in people, the way they speak and communicate and, and think and create and, and everything. How boring would it be if we lived in a world where everybody thought exactly the same? as us and all we did all day was communicate see ourselves reflected back at us i don't think anybody would uh want to stick around in a world like that because i certainly wouldn't but i think that candace owens whatever ventures she has in the future kudos to you and good luck because i think the daily wire and candace owens are both gonna be fine so whatever happened there, I don't care what happened there. I really don't. I really don't. I have so much stuff in my daily life every day just dealing with my physical disability, my health, taking my medications on time, all of it. So I really don't care too deep diving into the details of that. Candace Owens will be fine, but I, I wish her well in the future whatever she undertakes i'm sure she will make money off of or be successful at and 
that makes my heart happy that that it seems amicable on both their sides and other than the the royal family the, you know they have a lot of cancer going on right now king charles iii also came out saying that he had cancer kate princess of wales um i also know that fergie had came out recently was saying that she had um some type of skin cancer i believe some kind of carcinoma melanoma um which is like some type of uh, skin cancers but that she was undergoing treatment they caught it and it hadn't spread all that so i you know i wish everybody with cancer i wish wish them well on their journey and hopefully they reach remission and they stay in remission and they live out their life because i tell you what i plan on living a very long beautiful life i've had a very long beautiful life so far all 38 years of it and i plan on continuing i want to be very 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 old before they burn my remains or put me in the ground i want to be able to do a lot more so so that is that um i've done a lot of traveling when i was younger i'm i'm not really big into traveling you know um i know a lot of people are there's maybe a few places i like to go before i die but i'm no in no rush to get there um I just don't, you know, sitting in a car for so long, being on a plane, sitting on a train, sitting on a bus, you know, to me, it's just like, uh, the older you get, uh, the less I find that to be fun. I mean, maybe if I was rich and had access to a private jet and all that, like all these celebrities and politicians and public figures, maybe I would like it more, but no, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. I would still be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's, that's just me. That's just me. Um, and I, I don't really find traveling all that intriguing. I've been to a lot of places and it's all just like the same place you're always at. Just maybe some differences. You always find the same kind of people everywhere you go to. But yeah, I want, I want to live a very long life and I wish that for everybody. I wish that for everybody. A very long life cancer or not but they are finding that the the last 10 years the cancers that are popping up in people under the age of 50 have over doubled and that's really concerning why is that why is that i'm wondering if that's isolated to just um industrialized countries like the united states or if that's also in third world countries because i know those blue zones they're finding people are living to be 100 or or older and they're eating what frugivores should be, which are like plant-based um, diets, and they think that's contributing to that. But the cancer thing, yeah, that's, re that's really con really concerning that so many people are getting cancer. But I am not going to be defeated. I'm not going to be defeated by cancer. And even waiting for SSI and SSDI and having a lawyer, a disability lawyer, helping me take care of that. I've been fighting for that for over six years. Cancer, and they still are like, nope, you could be dying of cancer, unable to work, and we're not going to do anything for you. And that's really crazy to me. Really, really effing crazy to me. But yeah, speaking of people or dislike or hate or infuriating which there's not really many of those that I have but I, I have come across one um, and you guys know who that is which is without a crystal ball Katie Joy Polson who is still very proactively and in a negative way on her bullshit because check this out I'm going to show you I thought it was bad. Not even 20 hours later, she had already five videos and then seven videos about Garrison Brown's um, unaliving of himself. I thought that was bad, but since that news broke, and you can see right here, let's see, without a crystal ball, she has, and I have counted, look, all these videos, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 
21 videos. Now, I'm not going to, well, I know a lot of people say stuff about Katie Joy Paulson, but I'm going to say, what kind of person do you have to be that you are creating content out of a family's child's unaliving of himself? That right there, that fact tells me everything I need to know about her, her channel. And that's it. That's it. 21 videos. 21 videos. I'm going to tell you right now, Katie Joy Paulson of Without a Crystal Ball, she is not a journalist. She does not have a degree in mass communication. She is not hired by any mass media corporation or media corporation of any kind of way to practice journalism. She is a normal person like everybody else that made an account on YouTube and started putting videos, homemade videos on her channel and calling it content. She does not have sources. She's lying and making it up so she can spew her bullshit and then hide it behind I have a source, which goes against all ethics in journalism. And it's disgusting. It's disgusting. There are certain things that you should not be allowed to just monetize or uh, uh, make all this content creation about cancer being one of them. And another is, I, I know that Garrison Brown was 24 when this happened, but it doesn't matter if he was 24. And legally over that threshold of, of being a legal adult, he was a family's child. End of story. Somebody out there, that was their son. That's all you have to know in your mind is that's somebody's son. Somebody's brother, potentially, nephew, uncle, it, you, husband. Doesn't matter. That person had a family and has a mother and a father, alive or not. You are taking something so horrendously tragic and sensationalizing it so you can get paid from the ad revenue on YouTube and monetize the videos. You're making money off of those videos. That's sick. That's sick. And that tells me everything that I need to know about Katie Joy Paulson. Another person that really shouldn't be making videos, speaking on anything, even in your own opinion. Should you be forming an opinion on it? I certainly haven't. It's tragic. It just is. It's what happened. And with that being said, I'm not going to speculate because no family is perfect. No parent is perfect. No child is perfect. And you can say and have the opinions all you want. And then karma bites you on the ass and something like that happens to you or to your family. You know, there's just certain things that people shouldn't be making videos about to try to sensationalize headlines and uh, captions to get the views, to get the subscribers, to get the clicks, the likes. To me, that's not worth it. If you're not getting it in a genuine and honest way, then oh well. So what? You don't get your big cut from the YouTube ad revenue pool. You don't get your cut. So what? And she's choosing. She's choosing to try to get that cut, that check. And, uh, yeah, so that's just the running theme that I've seen in a lot of the news lately is a lot of people saying a lot of things and making a lot of content on a lot of people and a lot of topics that they really shouldn't be. Especially with um, the cancer and, and Kate or even King Charles III or even Fergie, you know. It, it just the sensationalism that was around um, Princess Kate was just a whole nother level like she actually had to put out a statement that said hey i'm going in to have this surgery this abdominal surgery it's gonna be a while for me to heal you know 
all that. The thing is, it takes sometimes CT scans. It Cancer doesn't show up. It didn't for me. I had two CT scans before and biopsies and three other surgeries before it was actually removed and confirmed in a pathology lab. And then they did the same thing when I had the last surgery, um, the 11-hour operation. They actually kept me open for all those hours because the pathology lab there in the op- by the operating room they had to take every single piece of everything that my uterus the part of my vagina that they removed my lymph nodes they had to take it all to the pathology lab and they had to actually check everything to make sure that no cancer cells or cancer had spread anywhere else they took it out anyway imagine people that have um can like blood cancer brain cancer lung cancer they those are can those are organs that cannot be like 100 percent fully removed you know, so the cancer could potentially always be there and your only option is treatment. I mean, at least for the this, it's it's something where you can actually remove the full cancer in any surrounding areas if it's caught, you know, in time. So I'm really grateful to God every single day that mine was caught early and that I was able to do everything. But now it's... Uh, I never pre- I never anticipated or thought about the future of what okay cancer oh you're going to die from it or you're going to survive it what oh, I never thought about the residual effects of cancer nobody ever talks about that and they never prepare you for that like hey the surgery the surgery yeah you're taking organs sex organs away from you and um two whole stems of lymph nodes what kind of effect is that going to have on your health, on your body, on your everyday for the rest of your life? They don't tell you about that. They also don't tell you about medications that you might have to be on for the rest of your life. Or, or how you are susceptible to getting sick easier. Any of it. Any of it. But, I, you know, when it comes to cancer, to me, cancer is just any kind of health thing. But cancer especially, because it does not discriminate. But it's one of those things that nobody should be talking about. Kind of like race, gender, all these other hot topics that I don't really want to say because I don't want my video to get flagged again, but, um, or removed. But those are just certain things that like, I wouldn't touch on those. I don't, I don't care. I might have my own opinion here, but I'm not going to sit here and make a video and then put it on the internet for all these people to sit there and pick apart. You know, people want to pick, 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 pick. Stop fucking picking. Okay? You want to nitpick? Go look in the mirror and nitpick at yourself. Don't do that to other people. Just leave it be. Sometimes people read way too much into shit. Maybe Sometimes there's nothing there to read into. Okay? Just respect what people say and what people ask for. Maybe that's where we should fucking start as a society, as a nation, and as a globe. Just respect people's privacy. Respect what they ask for. Stop trying to infringe on their rights. And infringe on their space. And infringe on their body. And infringe on everything else. You know, I think people sometimes just push a little too far. Be content. Instill in the fact that it's okay if you don't know everything. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt you to not know everything. Just let things be. Let people be. Live and let live. That's it. That's it. But when you see people like Katie Joy Paulson, it infuriates you and it pisses you off. Because I certainly know it does me. Because she's doing the exact opposite. And you know what's really fucked up to me is I still cannot fathom and understand how... Like, I get so much flack all the fucking time for my tattoos and, 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 and whatnot. But I am not over here trying to look like some trailer park Martha Stewart. And, and doing and behaving and saying the things that she is. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy to me. How do, how, how in the hell does 368,000 people subscribe to her? How do you not see the horrible actions, behaviors, words, and choices that she is making? 
having that many subscribers is not holding her accountable or showing her consequences for that behavior, those actions, those choices, or those words. All that's doing is perpetrating her to think, I'm doing a great job. I'm going to keep doing it. It's insanity. What kind of world do we live in that this person can make 21 videos, all 21 of her last videos, she has not made a video about anything else other than that. About somebody's family losing somebody to unaliving themselves. If that's not proof enough of what she's doing, what do you need? What do you need to not subscribe to her? And just say, nope, I'm not going to participate in that anymore. What do you need? Do you have to have hidden video and audio of Katie Joy Paulson behind the scenes? And how she does her videos and how she comes up with these fake sources and lies and how she makes everything up. Do you, do you have to see that to believe what she tells you herself, what she shows you herself? My greatest wish out of all of this rambling that I'm doing today is just that anybody that's creating content, anybody that's a smaller channel that that doesn't have the subscribers or the comments or the flow like Katie Joy Paulson does, and, and maybe she doesn't deserve it, but that's not for me to decide what she deserves and doesn't deserve, um, because karma in the end always gets everybody, but for me... The whole thing is there's, and, and my biggest wish for everybody is, is that their channel grows, that they get that chance, that they can get those kinds of subscribers or those kinds of views. Because there's a lot of really talented, really amazing, really beautiful, very intelligent, caring, big hearted, amazing, loving, beautiful people out there. And there's a lot of them on YouTube, genuinely good people. And they deserve to have that, or even a portion of that. They deserve to have a portion of the pie. Like, Katie Joy Paulson thinks that another person coming up and getting more subscribers and gaining traction on YouTube, she looks at it like that's taking away from her piece of the pie and can't have that. I think that's why she starts so much shit with everybody and why she tries to attack people and why she de- uh, defames people, slanders them, libels them, stalks them, doxes them. Because she doesn't want anybody else to get higher on YouTube in any kind of way. Because then they're going to start taking a piece of her pie. That's why she's doing that. She has absolutely no interest. She just found her little niche with the sister wives and then that gained you know oh to the cult thing and then which included the Duggars and all of that and the religious cults but she's not actually doing any advocacy work for those women in fact she does nothing but harm those women that she says she wants to dismantle these cults well what's your plan if you're an advocate for that you should have a plan for how to help these people to get away from those kinds of cults and how to set themselves up so they can be successful independent adults that doesn't have to rely on that kind of family or society or religion but she doesn't do any kind of advocacy work at all and she doesn't put her money towards any kind of advocacy work and that also tells me everything that I need to know about her as a person as a human being I couldn't even imagine her as a wife or mother but it just simply to me is not fair but my biggest wish is that as more people start seeing and realizing and understanding and, and oh my god the light came on with content creators specifically Katie Joy Paulson that other people start to get traction on their channel or that they get to have that kind of luck and those kind of subscribers and growth with with their channels because other people there's a lot of them that actually do deserve it and do a lot of work and put a lot of work in, in their videos and are doing all the work themselves you know they don't have people there helping or the money to have people there helping so i just think um 
I'm, I myself have made a better effort to not subscribe to people like that and to actually subscribe to the ones that I really connect with and the people, those people that are unique, have unique channels, unique perspectives, ideas, and, and all of that. Um, I even follow somebody who's in her seventies cause I, I'm a crocheter. I've been crocheting since I was nine. I'm a crochet master. I'm actually fantastic at crocheting not trying to toot my own horn, but I, I really am. I can look at anything and crochet it. And um, I've always wanted to get in teaching and stuff, but with my disability, like I can't crochet nowhere near like what I used to when I was really young. I have severe joint problems and pain, chronic pain with it. And um, just my range of motion is really bad sometimes. But like I follow people like her and I just like, I look at her and I think, oh my God, people are always ageist. And being ageist is just like being racist. It's just like being discriminatory about anything else. And I just look at her and I think, oh my God, she's fucking awesome. And not only is she fucking awesome, she's fucking beautiful. Like amazing. She's so beautiful for her age. Like I couldn't even imagine her being young, her younger self looking better than her now. But I just really enjoy her channel. And I'm like, you know, this is the type of people that we should be supporting and loving. But that's just with any kind of media, people are not going to be attracted to that kind of thing. I could come on here and make all kinds of videos saying all kinds of bullshit. I can come on here and start making videos and do that. But I am not that person. I don't have that kind of heart or that kind of character to come on here and spew a bunch of lies and not give a fuck about the damages and the repercussions of what kind of content I put out in the world and how that ricochets on other people and what kind of effect and effect that may have on other people. I sometimes wish I could be because then maybe I would actually be worth some kind of money. I'd be able to buy a house. That's all I ever wanted was just to buy a, a disability safe house and have a new car for once in my life. But you know what? I, it's not it's not worth being that kind of monster but that's the funny thing and that's the irony that has never been lost on me with how much flack and attention and even praise and love that I get for being so tattooed you know there's people that look like that completely normal and they are the worst motherfuckers on the planet they are just the worst so I don't care if my channel grows or not but that kind of shit is going to be exposed. And I'm not even one that's doing all the exposing. But when I came upon her, I knew right away, like, something's not right here. Something is not right. So that right there just seems to be the theme that I've noticed in news in the last week is topics that people shouldn't be talking about, especially with Candace Owens and her decision um, to leave the Daily Wire because of anti-Semitism, even though she didn't necessarily say an anti-Semitic remark. It's just over the Israel and Palestine thing and her opinions on it. And that's so funny because the Daily Wire, they totally are supposed to be this, you know, very progressive, um, conservative type of media that pushes truth and personal opinion and all that. And people shouldn't be canceled for, for, for that. And yet that's exactly what they do to Candace Owens. So... Yeah, people, you got to be really careful with what kind of content you're putting out there. You really do. And um, a, lo a lot of the ones that are very su successful in content and doing their channels, it just is really not lost on me that some of them are the worst human beings and they're making shit up. They don't have sources. They don't have any real connections. They're in a studio or in their own home doing exactly this, doing all this. And they're acting like something they're not. Or they're saying things that aren't true. Or they're just completely being somebody that they're not. They're acting a certain way because people know that negativity and even stupidity on a level brings in a lot of followers, a lot of traction, a lot of attention, a lot of views, a lot of comments. If you do something nonsensical and what appears to be ignorant and keep doing it, people are going to be like, wanting to comment more because that's like reverse psychology people are going to be intrigued by that what, what, what are you doing that for no you should know better you never do that don't ever put your cast iron skillet in water don't ever do that you know and if you show a video of yourself doing that for nothing but an hour oh this is how you clean a cast iron skillet yeah, people are going to be drawn to that in a negative way because people are drawn to negative 
sometimes very sickly more than they are the positive. And that's why news, they've known this forever. That's why news is all these bad, horrible things and events. And YouTube, content creators, influencers, they're no exception at all. But I just wanted to ramble about those things and what I've missed in the last week and say hello to everybody. And I wanted to wish you a really great weekend and a great spring break. And I hope everybody's doing fantastic. I wish you all happiness, joy, health. And if none of those things, I hope you're at least content. So thank you for coming back. Thank you for watching. And I will see you on the flip side.